As we learned in episode 5, the Thessalonians were concerned because they thought they were living in the day of the Lord and had missed the rapture. Paul wrote a second letter to them to reassure them they hadn't missed the rapture. He stressed they could know this with assurance because two signs had to take place first before the rapture and the day of the Lord. Because those signs will happen during the tribulation period, they preclude a pre-tribulation rapture. In that previous episode 5, we discussed arguments that pre-tribulationists have used to combat this. These arguments centered on the translation of a single Greek word, apostasia. And in that episode, we saw how, like links in a chain, generations of pre-tribulational scholars have supported a mistranslation of that word. This is what I term a micro-proof. Certainly, focusing on one single word is micro. Although we refuted the pre-trib arguments in that previous episode, there is yet another proof that demonstrates that 2 Thessalonians disproves the pre-tribulation rapture theory. And it's a macro proof, a big picture proof. When Paul wrote this epistle, it contained a number of concepts that Paul hadn't written about before. Where did he get these ideas? Certainly, from the Holy Spirit. But did he base this teaching on a previous scriptural passage as well? If so, what was that previous scripture? This video will show that it was Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse. This is a new and revolutionary discovery. It demonstrates that Paul was paraphrasing and explaining the concepts in Matthew 24, concepts that negate a pre-tribulation rapture. Of course, in episode seven, we provided a similar proof that demonstrates that 1 Thessalonians 4 and 5 is based on Matthew 24 as well. Matthew 24 seems to have been Paul's primary end time reference text. This video concentrates on 2 Thessalonians, however. Now, although today's Bibles divide 2 Thessalonians into chapters and verses, the original epistle was a letter meant to be read aloud in a single hearing. It is a unified whole. Paul begins this letter by explaining to the Thessalonians that what they are experiencing is tribulation, not wrath. In episode two, we explained how tribulation is something all Christians are promised to experience. Paul continues by explaining that this tribulation is a sign to them that they are worthy of the coming kingdom and not something that is happening to them as punishment. The coming Great Tribulation will be just such a sign to Christians enduring it, a sign of worthiness, not punishment. After making that clear, Paul begins to show the Thessalonians why they can't be living during the wrath of God. Paul explains that God will afflict the unrepentant on the same day, he gives relief in the form of the rapture to the righteous. What day is that? It will be the day Jesus is revealed from heaven. As we explained in episode 9, it is a same day wrath and rapture. And this will not be a silent or secret revealing. Jesus will be revealed with his angels and in flaming fire for the whole world to see. What is this flaming fire? Why, the Shekinah glory of the Lord. At this point, Paul makes an interesting remark about this day, which absolutely time marks it as the day of the rapture. He tells us that he and the rest of his mission team will be given relief on this same exact day. Now, Paul and his fellow missionaries are dead. When will they receive relief? only at the resurrection of the righteous. Because the resurrection and rapture happen at the same time, this day must be the day of the rapture as well. And look what Paul says happens to the unrighteous on this same day. They face eternal destruction. Is that what we think happens at a pre-tribulational rapture? No. Every pre-tribulationist believes millions or even hundreds of millions come to faith during the tribulation. 
This passage in 1 Thessalonians completely disproves the pre-trib rapture position because Paul says the unrighteous face eternal destruction on that day. And where did Paul derive this teaching? From Matthew 24. Let's look where he found all these concepts. In just this short passage from chapter 1, there are six comparisons with Matthew 24. Both Matthew 24's reference to the days of Noah and 2 Thessalonians refer to a same-day wrath and rapture, and both use the terms that day or the day. Both passages refer to the revealing or appearing of Jesus. In both passages, Jesus comes from heaven with his angels. In both passages, he comes in his great Shekinah glory, also termed lightning and flaming fire. In both the Olivet Discourse and 2 Thessalonians, the unrepentant face eternal destruction. And finally, in both, there is a gathering together of those still alive and those who have been resurrected. Since Jesus' teaching in the Olivet Discourse was the only New Testament scripture about end times available to Paul, it isn't surprising that the Apostle Paul used it as the basis for his epistle. These six comparisons in chapter 1 make it obvious that Matthew 24 was the source of Paul's inspiration. But just like cresting a hill only to discover a beautiful hidden beach, when we begin to explore the second chapter, there is even more, much, much more. Remember, this epistle is one continuous document. So when we begin to explore chapter two, it is really just a continuation of what we just looked at. Therefore, when Paul mentions the coming of the Lord and our gathering to him, which is a reference to the rapture, he is speaking of what he just discussed only a few verses previously, when Jesus comes in flaming fire. Pre-tribulationists have had to claim this is a reference back to Paul's previous letter, 1 Thessalonians. But looking at these chapters 1 and 2 together only points out how impossible their claim is. Paul is only further discussing what he started out his letter talking about. It is a single, continuous message. And that subject was that the Thessalonians didn't need to be worried because they hadn't missed the rapture or the gathering together. Paul gave them the reason not to be worried. Paul told them that the rapture would not take place unless, unless two signs are seen. We discussed these two signs in depth in episodes 5 and 8 and proved they take place during the tribulation period. In this episode, we're going to prove that again, but by different means. If Paul based his teaching in 2 Thessalonians 2 on Matthew 24, well, then the concepts in 2 Thessalonians 2 come from Matthew 24, such as, what was the apostasy? And, what is the timing of the revealing of Antichrist? So let's look at the comparisons in this chapter. There are an amazing 11 more identical comparisons. In fact, there are so many places Paul referred to Matthew 24 that we can't fit them all on one screen. First, Paul uses the same Greek word to describe Jesus' coming. Parousia. Second, and very importantly, when Paul wanted to refer to the rapture, he didn't use the term from his previous letter, but used the same exact Greek root word used in Matthew 24's rapture passage, episanago, or gathered together. Paul also begins his discussion with a passage about not being deceived just as it was Jesus' first point in Matthew 24. And one of the two signs that Paul said must precede the rapture is the apostasy or falling away. Jesus referred to this same event in Matthew 24.10 as taking place during 
the Great Tribulation. Paul and Jesus mention lawlessness that will prevail during the Great Tribulation. And again, Paul uses the same exact Greek word as Matthew 24, anomia, for lawlessness. Paul's second sign, which must occur before the rapture, is the abomination of desolation. And as we learned in episode 8, this is the most important sign for believers to know and recognize. Because, as Matthew 24 informs us, it is after this sign that the Great Tribulation begins. And both 2 Thessalonians and Matthew 24 refer to the abomination as occurring in the holy place, the temple of God. Paul refers to Matthew 24's false Christ, the man of sin, as being instrumental in the deception. Both 2 Thessalonians and Matthew 24 refer to the great signs and wonders the Antichrist will do. Matthew 24 implies that Antichrist's power will diminish at the appearing of Jesus after the sixth seal. 2 Thessalonians explicitly mentions this. And finally, and very importantly, 2 Thessalonians and Matthew 24 both specifically state the elect will not be misled. In Matthew 24, 24, they are called the elect. In 2 Thessalonians, they are called chosen in the truth. Paul referred to Matthew 24 17 times. Not once, not twice, but 17 times. Do not accept that Paul based the first two chapters of 2 Thessalonians on Matthew 24 is to be, in my opinion, close-minded. And what are the implications of this brand new understanding? First, that the apostasy of 2 Thessalonians 2 happens during the Great Tribulation, that the rapture happens after the midpoint of the Tribulation, that Matthew 24 is meant for Christians, and that the elect found in Matthew 24 are Christians. And finally, that the rapture, or as Paul and Jesus call it, the gathering together, happens in Matthew 24, 31, after the Great Tribulation. All of this means that there is no pre-tribulation rapture. It is an open and shut case.